Well, at this stage, we'll mention the other autoimmune diseases that can accompany type 1 diabetes. Remember, we're talking about diseases which can accompany type 1, not type 2. And the first one's got a great name, Hashimoto thyroiditis, or Hashimoto's thyroid. And what happens here is that for autoimmune reasons, there's autoantibodies that actually attack the thyroid gland. And this can result in fibrosis and enlargement of the thyroid gland. And in Hashimoto's, the thyroid producing tissue is progressively destroyed, so it's a hypothyroidism. The patient gets low levels of thyroxine. And the next one is also an autoimmune disease affecting the thyroid gland, and it's Graves' disease. Now, Graves' disease is a bit complicated because here the autoantibodies mimic thyroid stimulating hormone, which is normally produced by the pituitary gland. So you have more thyroid stimulating hormone shaped molecules, which are actually autoantibodies, going to the thyroid gland and stimulating the thyroid gland to produce more thyroid hormone. So Graves' disease actually is a hyperthyroidism. The patient will be thyrotoxic and sometimes they develop bulgy eyeballs, exophthalmus. But the main thing to notice is they're hyperthyroid. So patients can go hypothyroid with Hashimoto's and hyperthyroid with Graves' disease. Both autoimmune diseases, but one in the Hashimoto's, the autoantibodies are attacking, attacking the thyroid tissue directly. In the Graves, the autoantibodies artificially stimulating the thyroid tissue. Now, Mycenae gravis is an autoimmune disease affecting the acetylcholine receptors in the neuromuscular junction. And what this means is that the nerve impulse can't get from the nerves through to the muscles and the patient develops muscular weakness as a consequence of that. Addison's disease is very rare. It's an autoimmune disease of the adrenal cortex. The adrenal cortex normally produces the adrenal cortical hormones, the steroid hormones such as hydrocortisone, and the lack of those causes Addison's type disease. It's the exact opposite of Cushing's disease, where there's too much of the adrenal cortical hormones. And pernicious anemia, uh, this is probably more common. In pernicious anemia, there's autoimmune attack, there's antibodies attack the gastric mucosa, particularly the parietal cells in the gastric mucosa. And one of the things the parietal cells produce is called intrinsic factor. Now in this context, in the context of intrinsic factor, what is the extrinsic factor? Well, the extrinsic factor is vitamin B12. So for vitamin B12 to be absorbed for normal blood formation, you need the intrinsic factor produced by the gastric mucosa and you need the extrinsic factor, which is the vitamin B12. It's only the combination of both of those things which can be absorbed. So if the gastric mucosa atrophies for autoimmune reasons, you're not going to produce the intrinsic factor Therefore, the extrinsic factor, that is the vitamin B12, can't be absorbed properly. But that's okay, as long as you spot it, because you can give them cytamine injections to completely compensate for that condition. So, other autoimmune diseases that patients with type 1 diabetes may have, just to keep an eye open for those in your patients with type 1 diabetes.